Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do the first part of a two-part series on lubrication. If this is your first time, my name is Alex, and I make videos on watch, service, repair, and lubrication. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, let's get started. So to start with, when you're servicing a movement, it's always advisable to follow the manufacturer's specifications from the technical sheet. If you plan on servicing vintage watches, the problem you're going to run into is technical sheets are pretty new. They haven't been around that long, so you're not going to find them for older vintage watches. It's for this reason that you're better off understanding how to lubricate the different components of a watch without the need of a technical sheet. Once you understand the principles, it doesn't matter if you're working on a watch that's 10 years old or a watch that's 100 years old the principles are still going to be the same. So when you think about watch lubrication, lubricants do one of two things. It's either to reduce the friction or it's to reduce the wear of two pieces of metal sliding against each other. In this video, the lubricants I'm going to be using are industry standard. But later on in the video, we'll talk about some alternatives that you can use that are going to be a little less expensive. The first thing to know is that you never, ever lubricate the teeth on a wheel or the pinions where they mesh together. The exception to this is on the escape wheel, which we'll be discussing in part two. So let's go ahead and start with the powertrain and we'll add the balance wheel into this group. The powertrain is made up of five wheels. These individual wheels either operate on a high torque, low speed or a low torque, high speed basis. The first wheel, the mainspring barrel, the second wheel, and the third wheel all operate at a high torque, low speed. For these wheels, you want to use a thicker oil like Mobius HP 1300. The fourth wheel, the escape wheel, and the balance wheel all operate at a low torque, high speed rate. For wheels like this, you need a lighter oil like Mobius 9010. So just remember, high torque, low speed, HP 1300, low torque, high speed, Mobius 9010. Now there's other wheels and parts throughout the watch that move occasionally, and they also need lubrication. The difference with these parts and knowing how to lubricate them just depends on whether they rotate or whether they're sliding under tension. Parts that just rotate need a heavier oil like HP 1300. Parts sliding against each other under tension need a grease. And for that, I use Mobius 9504. Now in a manual wind movement, the only lubrication in the barrel is on the mainspring and the barrel arbor, which we'll be going over in just a minute. And that's basically it. Now when we move into automatics and watches with complication, there are special lubrication points, but what we've covered so far covers probably 80% of lubrication. Luckily, the tools for lubrication are minimal and some of the least expensive. The first thing you need is a container to hold the lubricants while you're working. Really, the most important thing is that they just have a lid. Now, you can spend a lot of money on an oil pot, but you don't really have to. The main thing is that you've got a smooth glass surface on the inside and individual lids that cover up the individual pots. This style has three individual pots but the problem is that it has one lid so every time you open it to use it you're potentially contaminating all three areas basically exposing all three every time you need to get a dip of oil the next thing you're going to need are dip oilers now you can buy these in sets or you can buy them individually personally i like to buy the individual oilers because i don't really have a use for the larger oilers that come in a kit now, I'm not saying buying a kit's bad. Most of the oilers are usable, and a larger one could be used for other things like when you need a probe. Now, the last thing you're going to need is something to clean the tips. Some people like to use pith wood. I prefer to use these foam blocks because you don't have to worry about them shedding, and they last a long time. Plus, you have multiple sides that you can use, not to mention the fact this is how I store my oil. The other thing that's important in lubrication is making sure that your work area is always as clean as possible. Now, cleanliness is always important in watchmaking, but it's especially important when you're doing lubrication work because 
hair, and dust will be attracted to the oil. Dust has a way of finding itself into the balance hole jewels. And if it does, it will really screw up the timing in your dial positions. Dial up, dial down, which makes it very hard to even begin to regulate the watch. I usually start by wiping down my work area with Windex and a paper towel, and then make sure that you check above and see if there's anything like a light that might have dust on it that could fall down as well. When dispensing your oil into the oil pot, you don't want to dip your oiler directly into the factory bottle. You really just want to dispense enough of the oil that you need into your oil pot. Otherwise, you risk contaminating this entire bottle. And you really just want to remove enough to last for whatever you're working on for the next week or so. Anything much longer than that, and you just increase the risk of it getting contaminated with hair or dust. Now, one method to dispense the oil from the factory container into your oil pot is by using tweezers. You first make sure your tweezers are clean, hold them together, and you just dip it down into the oil in the factory jar, pulling it up and transferring it into the oil pot. The oil will sit between the tines of the tweezers and be pulled up out of the bottle, and you can dispense it into your oil pot. The second method is to either use a clean wire or a clean screwdriver tip. Again, dipping it into your bottle, pulling out a little bit, dropping it into your oil pot. Both of these methods are a little bit wasteful because you're always going to have some leftover oil on whatever it is you're dipping into your original oil jar. So stick around for the bonus tip because I'm going to show you my favorite way that I've been using to dispense oil for many years. It's going to save you from wasting any oil. One of the biggest mistakes that new people make when they're trying to learn how to lubricate a watch is simply over lubrication. The amount of lubrication that it actually takes is minute. You almost can't even see it. Oiling really needs to be done with at least a 10 times loop, if not a 15 times loop. Over lubrication which you're going to see all the time in vintage watches. When the watch parts are over lubricated, oil spreads all throughout the movie to all the places that you don't want it to be. And if you over lubricate, it's going to cause all kinds of problems and reduce the service life of the watch that you're servicing. Controlling how much oil you pick up has more to do with the way you insert the oiler into the oil pot. So here's a gold nugget for you. When you get a new oiler, spend a few minutes and polish the tip of the oiler to a mirror finish. Now, as you look at this tip, you'll see how it comes from the factory. Those lines will pull the oil all down the tip. Now look at a polished tip. When the tip is polished, the oil is more likely to bead up on the tip than spread across it. This makes a huge difference. Now, when dipping your oiler, there's two other factors that are very important on controlling how much oil you're picking up. You never dip the entire tip into the oil. Your goal is to pick up oil from only one side of the tip. With your oiler at a high angle, you're only going to pick up a small amount of oil. When you go into the pot holding the oiler at a lower angle and you touch the oil, you'll pull away more oil. So, high angle, less oil, low angle, more oil. So again, the goal is to pick up oil from only one side of the tip. So don't dip the whole tip into the oil, just the one side. And I'll explain this a little bit more when we get to lubricating the train jewels. Now the second factor in controlling how much oil you pick up is determined by the speed you remove the tip from the oil. When you dip and pull away fast, more oil is retained. When you pull away slow, less oil will remain on the tip. It's really just that simple. So remember, don't dip your whole tip into the oil. Only use one side of the tip. Going in high pulls out a little bit of oil. Going in at a lower angle pulls more oil out. When you pull your tip out fast, more oil is retained. And when you pull it away slow, less oil is retained. So if you want to pick up the smallest amount of oil, you would go in at a high angle and pull away slow. In reality, lubrication is a lot harder than most people think. Judging how much oil you're actually picking up just takes time and practice. But over time, you'll develop a feel for it. 
One thing that I will tell you that will help is when you're inserting your oiler into the oil pot, touch the oiler to the outside rim of the lubricant instead of in the middle. You'll be less likely to pick up too much oil and you'll have a little better control. The thing that you need to be aware of is that the outside rim of the oil spot is usually where dust and hair collects. So if you're pulling oil from the outside of the ring, make sure that your oil pot is clean. You don't want to introduce dust into the jewel when you're lubricating. So the first thing you need to know about jewel lubrication is if, for example, lubricating the jewel on the fourth wheel, you want the lubrication to be the same amount on opposite jewels. In other words, you want the pivots on the fourth wheel to have the same amount of oil on either side of the boot. When it's not, the friction on that wheel will be different depending on whether it's facing dial up or dial down. And again, changes in friction cause changes in amplitude, which makes it harder to regulate the watch. Also, make sure that you use the correct oil on both pivots on the same wheel. Again, if you're lubricating the fourth wheel as an example, you don't want to use 90-10 on one side of the jewel and on the other side of the movement, lubricate the fourth wheel with HP 1300. Why? Because it changes the friction level. And what happens when you change the friction? It changes the amplitude, which changes the rate, which makes it harder to regulate the watch. All right, now to lubricate the jewel, we're going to start with a small bubble on one side of the tip. The reason that you want oil on one side of the tip is that it allows the tip of the oiler to touch the bottom of the pivot as it goes down into the jewel without getting any oil on the flat side of the jewel or the tip of the pivot. Oil left on these areas will draw the lubrication away from the jewel hull through capillary action. Now, you can tell if the pivot has enough oil on it by looking into the jewel with your loop and moving the wheel up and down. You should be able to see a small ring of oil around the pivot. And lastly, never ever lubricate pallet jewels. Now, lubricating the lower jewel is not so much of a problem, though you can't just lubricate one without the other. The problem comes from the upper jewel close to the pallet fork arm. Lubricating that jewel, what happens is lubrication actually will work its way down the pallet fork arm, get onto the banking pins, and work its way down into the fork slot, which transfers oil to the impulse jewel. Now you got lubrication on the banking pins where it's not supposed to be, in the pallet fork where it's not supposed to be, and on the impulse jewel where it's not supposed to be. Within three months of your service, you'll start noticing problems, and within six months, the watch might even stop running. So never, ever lubricate the pallet jewels. Now, there are other wheels in the watch that turn on a post instead of a jewel hole that also need lubrication. The ratchet wheel and the click all need HP 1300. On the dial side, you have the wheels of the motion works that also need HP 1300 on the post. Now, you'll also notice that a lot of these wheels also have a ring under them that essentially keeps the wheel off of the main plate. Now, for this area, since the wheel is also sliding across it, I use a drop of grease on the ring and HP 1300 on the post. Now, when you take this wheel off after lubrication, you can actually see the lubrication on the bottom of the wheel that if it was left dry, which would cause wear on that wheel. You'll also notice that intermediate wheels also have a similar ring. So HP 1300 on the post and a little bit of 9504 grease under the wheel. And go extra light here. It doesn't need a lot. Now, since the cannon pinion slides around the center wheels extended arbor when the watch is being wound, a small amount of grease, 9504, is appropriate here. And of course, on the outside of the canopy, we put a little touch of HP 1300 right before the hour wheel goes on. The barrel arbor has four points of lubrication. First is the shoulder that rides on the barrel drum and the barrel lid when the mainspring barrel is closed, as well as the pivots that sit in the main plate and the bridge. Now, there's really two ways to lubricate the arbor where it goes through the holes in the barrel lid and drum. The first way is to lubricate the shoulder before the barrel's closed. Now to do this, you just touch the tip of the oiler into the corner of the shoulder of the barrel arm. The second way is to do it after the barrel's closed. This is really more appropriate on new barrels 
Now, I also lubricate it to the shoulder where the arm or pivots go into the bridge in the main plate. Unless, of course, they're jeweled, which I'm just going to lubricate just like any other jewel pole. Now, if you have a mainspring that's good enough to reuse, after you've cleaned the mainspring, you just apply a thin layer of 8200 grease onto the mainspring. The method is basically the same as when we clean the mainspring. You just take the same type of folded paper, you add a couple drops of 8200 grease onto the paper, lay it over the mainspring, and then you pull the mainspring through the paper, distributing the grease onto the mainspring. Then you just take another clean paper and you pull the mainspring through it again, which leaves a very thin layer of 8200 on the mainspring. And that's it. That's all you need. It doesn't need anything else. You don't need to add any drops of oil to it. Nothing. And of course, if you're using a new mainspring, they already come pre-lubricated, so you don't have to do anything. Now, the majority of the parts in the keyless works are going to need grease just because of the very nature of everything sliding against each other. Now, one of the exceptions is the pivot on the end of the stem. That just gets HP 1300. Now, what I like to do on the square part of the stem is start with just putting a small dot of grease on each side. And then I like to take my oiler and just lightly spread it out a little bit. The two areas that are going to come in contact with the main plate, we put a little dollop of grease and just spin them around. That'll spread them out. The ratchet teeth on the sliding pinion just get three or four little dots of grease on them. Once the sliding pinion is installed onto the stem, it'll mesh with the teeth of the winding pinion, spreading the lubrication. Now the post that the yoke sits on just gets a light coating of HP 1300 and then a very light coating of grease on either side of the groove on the winding pinion. This is where the yoke will sit, sliding back and forth as you go from first position to second position. And then we'll put a, just a dot of grease on the end of the yoke where it comes in contact with the setting lever. And now we can drop that in. Now the yoke will come in contact with a spring that'll be sliding back and forth. So we're going to put a very light dot of grease right there where that contact point is. And you can actually see as we move the yoke up and down how it slides back and forth. That's a greasing point. And of course, you can see the contact spot between the yoke and the setting lever as well. Now, since the pin on the setting lever slides back and forth inside the setting lever jumper, I like to spread a thin layer of grease on it before I install it. I just find it's a lot cleaner to do it before you install it as opposed to doing it after. Now, if you're super new or you're on a real budget, and you just want something to get started, probably the best option is going to be Mobius 8000. Mobius 8000 is a great way to start. It's an inexpensive oil to use while you're practicing and developing your skills. Just understand, it's not a long-term solution. It's going to be thicker than 9010. It's going to be thinner than HP 1300. It's certainly not going to be ideal for your palette jewels, but it's a great way to start learning. For some lubricants, there's just no good substitution, like 9010. Instead of HP 1300, some people use Mobius D5. Mobius D5 was the standard for a long time. Now, the initial cost is about the same as buying HP 1300. The difference is with D5, you're going to get a larger quantity. But if you look around, you might be able to find it in a smaller bottle. An option for grease that's less expensive than Mobius 9504 is Coat DX. Now, you can buy a pretty large quantity for about $13. Honestly, a lot of people still use it. There's really nothing wrong with it. It has kind of fallen out of favor with watchmakers because it's hard to clean off. You can always tell a movement that has Coat DX on it because typically you're going to have to go back and touch up a lot of the parts of the keyless works because it didn't all come off in the wash. So with that, let's get to the bonus tip. 
Now with the cost of lubrication, anything you can do to prevent waste and save money is going to help. I do this by storing my main oils, Mobius 9010 and HP 1300 in syringes. By storing them in a syringe, it allows me to only dispense a very tiny amount into my oil pot, eliminating the waste from using the tweezer method or the screwdriver method to dip the oil out of the factory bottle. What's even better is you can buy a small quantity of these for about seven or eight dollars on Amazon. Just make sure they have the thinner needle. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you had as much fun as I did. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or video suggestions, please drop them in the comments. If you learned anything at all, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. In the next video, we'll cover lubricating the palette jewels as well as the balance jewels. And until next time, we're out of here.